Hello, I am Queen Kunde Eno. Join us every Tuesday on the program Talking Peace, where we raise discourse on how to attain peaceful coexistence and tolerance in our society. Talking Peace is a production of ZT Communications in partnership with Taraba State Broadcasting Service, TSBS, Jalungo. For inquiries and advert placements, please call 0803-454-0469. Talking Talking Peace peace is the the meeting meeting point. point. Join Join us. Hello, thanks for staying tuned in here with us. It's again another edition of Talking Peace and we sure want to discuss how we can enjoy peaceful coexistence. Well, it's um, no longer news about the very ugly incidents that overturned the very peaceful protest we started in the name of the hashtag and SARS protest. And for us in Jalingo, we can attest to the fact that uh, we saw what we never imagine could take place i mean imagining very agile young persons and painfully again seeing women and children having to loot materials and unfortunately we lost some lives in the course of that which really portends some level of you know disturbances in taraba state on Talking Peace today, we're going to listen to one elder statesman how we can correct this norm because it's an actually abnormal situation for us as Tarabans and Nigerians at large. So join me again as I welcome on the program a very regular one and an elder statesman for Taraba State, Chief David Sabo Kente. Thanks again for honoring our invitation to talk to us on Talking Peace. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you to listeners. So, sir, even though you're far away in Abuja, I'm sure you got details of what transpired back home in Taraba State with the NSAS protest and the aftermath, where hoodlums ransacked the entire state. Both public and private properties were looted, and it actually created a lot of chaos and tension. How do you, what do you make of all this? Okay, let me first of all, um uh, clear the harsh words that were used uh, that are being used by you as uh, hoodlums and uh, and uh, uh, people went looting. I want us to be a bit fair to our youths in this country. Okay. I will be honest with you that we have not been very fair to our youths. Uh, in every society in the world, uh, in drawing up programs. Youth programs are emphasized. They are even, they call them first items uh, that are picked when budgets have been prepared. Mm. Unfortunately, in Nigeria, uh, people prefer uh, to draw programs for all other categories of people before coming to the youth. It is our inability to take care of the youths, get them carefully engaged, that led to what you saw. Uh, God has been very good to Nigeria. Um, the momentum has been gathering over a period. And when it sparked off, the youths reacted the way they reacted. Mm. So I don't like calling them hoodlums. I don't call them uh, thieves. Neither do I, don't call, do I call them uh, people that do not know what they are doing. Mm. They are people that have a pent up of frustration. Wow. People that have been frustrated for a very long time. Of course, when you get frustrated, there's a level it gets to that you would react. They mm. have reacted, and we are happy they reacted, and were able to listen to the voice of reasoning. Once the elders stood up and said it was not good, they stopped. We were all afraid that we we're not going to survive it. Mm. And so, um, it's a very unfortunate event. But it has happened, and we hope it doesn't happen again. It's an eye opener for uh, leadership uh, from the local government to the national level mm. to know that it's time for us to create programs that will engage very energetic people that have been ignored in the past. Wow, 
that's really fatherly and calming, suiting. You see why I say that on Talking Peace, we devise and uh, discuss ways we can actually achieve and attain peaceful coexistence. Well, everybody has a right, like you said. And then the youths are agile and a lot of energy to put into something, whether positive or negative. Now, with the current situation, how will we get these youths meaningfully engaged, like you have profiled here, to remove their mindset from this kind of ugly thing ever repeating itself? Okay, thank you. The answers thing came up uh, with very good intention, peaceful demonstration. Sure. Uh, but like I earlier said, uh, youths and uh, uh, young men and women that have been out of schools, out of their schools because of uh, strike, the ASU strike for the, instance. The ASU strike because of COVID-19. Mm -hmm. They've been at home with their parents under very harsh condition and they were all frustrated and that's why they did what they did. Uh, and like I said, what they did was to just give us a warning that we should uh, do, uh, take, uh, bring up a lot of planning for them. And I would advise that uh, for every, uh, all the strata of government, the candid advice I will give to each of the strata is to ensure that programs are put in place. And I'm happy that at the federal level, where I, where I work, a lot of programs for youth have been designed and implemented. Just this afternoon, uh, one of the ministers invited me and said, look, we want the list of youth from your area for empowerment. No, these things don't used to happen. Sure. I see the federal government is doing that. And uh, my advice to the state is to also start programs that will promote uh, engaging our youth. Mm. Our youth have been completely ignored. They have been downgraded. They are discouraged about life. They keep wondering about because even those who went to school and are finished mm. are still wandering in the street because we have not been able to provide for them. Uh, the local government level will encourage them to also design programs that will help the youth, that will get them engaged. Once we all give the youth attention, I assure you these things will be a thing of the past. I'm sure they did it, and I'm sure they may not do it again if they are well catered for and uh, programs are drawn up to take care of them. Well, I share your optimism, sir. And uh, of course, we do hope that this never happens again. But again, my worry now, with the COVID-19 uh, and then resources, dwindling resources and the oil, crude oil, which we depend on largely, running very low. Do we see any of these kinds of programs really coming up soon enough to engage these youths? Yeah, you see, part of uh, the problem we have in Nigeria and uh, all over the world now, um, emphasis have shifted from, uh, from wealth, money having cash or money okay. to be able to develop. It has shifted from uh, fiscal cash and resources, fiscal resources to human resources. Okay. The, the youth have been trained and they have the brain. The only thing is to reorient them so that they can be taken to, um, to be engaged in doing things that will be productive. Uh, for instance, uh, maybe in the past we've been used to training our young men. Somebody goes to read political science and comes to sit by the parents and wants a job. We should now be thinking of redesigning programs that will make our youth uh, more productive. Uh, by that, uh, uh, there's a program they call it Working from Home. There are programs that have been designed, IT programs that have been designed. And you can even work from home and collect as much as $1,000 in a month. You stay in Nigeria and work for a company in Asia. You can work for Amazon. Sure. You can work for any, for all the multinational corporations mm. from a particular unit. Uh, we in the NEDC are already working on a thing like that. We want to retrain and do reorientation for our youth, get them, um, even graduates that are, are in various other fields are now going to be retrained to acquire to, skills. To acquire skills so that they can be skillful and apply their brain in generating income uh, instead of the usual uh, civil service or white-collar jobs that used to, we used to do in the past. 
So that's, so that's part of the strategy that needs to be done. And once that is done, I assure you these things that happen will never happen again. Okay. Well, that sounds encouraging, but how soon we will begin to enjoy that? And then one other question I would follow up with that is the fact that the federal government can do maybe a little, just scratch on the iceberg. The state and local government you did mention, how is it possible for them to key into these things and how urgent do you think they will consider these already budgets are being presented in states and the budgets don't look like something that could accommodate things like this you just mentioned? Yeah, I assure you uh, at the federal level a lot is being done. Uh, a lot of programs that were put up initially are being cancelled so that the, and the funds are now being channeled mm -hmm. towards youth uh, empowerment programs. Uh, I'm sure in the same in the states also, in the various states, uh, many states are redesigning their budgets for the current year, the remaining part of the year, and their budgets for next year. Uh, I'm sure, virtually all the tiers of government would have to uh, put in close to fifty percent of their budgets towards youth empowerment programs in order to bring uh, the situation under control. Because the next will have a spike on youth's uh, uh, restiveness, is going to be very, very suicidal. Most revolutions all over the world begins like this. So for us to to hedge against that and to stop this from happening, there is the need for us to, as a matter of national policy, from the local government to the state up to the federal level, redesign our programs to make sure that the youths are well catered for. Mm. And uh, the little resources that are available uh, can can do quite a lot for our use. Even if we mean only concentrating on our use in the next budget, there's the need for us to do that. You advocate for that? Yes, if it means spending 60% of our budget on youth-oriented programs, I would be very happy and I will support that, absolutely. <music> Hello, I am Queen Kunde Enoch. Join us every Tuesday on the program Talking Peace, where we raise discourse on how to attain peaceful coexistence and tolerance in our society. Talking Peace is a production of ZT Communications in partnership with Tarapa State Broadcasting Service, TSBS, Jalungo. For inquiries and advert placements, please call 0803-454-0469. Talking Peace is the, the meeting, meeting point. point. Join, Join us. us. Well, you got the support there. The youth, after all, are the leaders of tomorrow. And then, of course, we must start to begin to take the front banner from today to be able to take charge tomorrow, especially when elders like uh, uh, DSK leaves the table, so you must mentor as well. But I will touch a little bit about uh, outside government now, your passion, I'm coming to it now. You love philanthropy so much. We can't do without that at this moment, don't you think so? Because it was not just the government that was the target. It was more looking like anyone is between the rich and the poor. So what do you advise maybe the rich people rather to do at this time to also salvage the situation? Yeah, the last time I appeared on your program, I spoke on your program, I told you the need for those who have been blessed sure. of God to share whatever they have with the less privileged. Hmm. Uh, that was before the answer. Sure, the sure. So it's as if I, were, I was the a prophet. <laughs> it was a, a, I would prophesy sign on uh, the issue. Hmm. Uh, I think what we need to do as uh, privileged members of the society is to uh, look backward and try to share whatever we have, share whatever we have with our youths and the less privileged. We will need to do that as a matter of uh, urgency. I encourage those who are wealthy, those who have foundations, those who have business outfits, to see the possibility of getting our youth engaged in these businesses. I have just had the management, uh, my management team in my company and I gave them a matching order and said, look, people that come to look for jobs with us, uh, once you are above 50, 
please do not employ. That we should give more time and more of the chances to the younger ones because there are a lot of them out there and unless we get them engaged, uh, they, will, they will be very harmful to the entire society in the nearest future. Hmm. But that's not to say again that uh, if a child goes wrong, it is wrong to also correct that child. Where do you place some of this airing, you don't want me to call them hoodlums, where do you place the those erring youths who took an ill advantage of a very good cause, like you did admit, the cause was a genuine one, and it was moving in line with the plan before those who had very negative um, um, intentions take it over and it spilled into something that no longer uh, was even to the interest of those who started that genuine protest at all. How do we correct them and reintegrate them into the system to be able to have a smooth moving? Again, let me thank you very much. Again, let me uh, tell you the fact uh, uh, about the situation in Nigeria. Because we have not been able to cater for our youths early and very well in life, our youths have gone into so many things. On there, also. There, there are a lot of uh, youths that are into some uh, awesome activities, uh, drugs, narcotics, and uh, stuff like that. Uh, the use that went on NSI's, uh, uh, this NSI's uh, protest generally meant well. But again, we have the ones that are a bit bad in their midst. They are the ones that now took advantage to do what they have done. And for me, I will not support anything uh, that is criminal in nature. So I also want to caution our youths uh, that uh, when protests are held uh, and they are attacked peaceful, they should be as peaceful as peaceful as such. They should not be um, uh, the way they have acted in the last uh, 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 the last outing. But like I say, the last outing was because of a pent up uh, pressure. A lot of people were offended. Most of the people that went to break stores and took food stuff and uh, went home actually didn't have food stuff. So you can't call them thieves or good luck. There are people that did not have food to eat. And again, on the government side, you don't have any reason to go and pile up food, food items that are meant as uh, meant to be palliatives for the populace. You put them in the warehouses, lock them up. Uh, and I'll quickly tell you, in Okari, where I come from, they use water to go to my store. They say, oh, this guy doesn't keep his food. Once the food comes, it distributes. If you go there, you'll find nothing. And truly, they went and got nothing. Mm. Uh, there is no need for one to go and be hoarding food. Once the food items are delivered to uh, either the local government or the state government or even at the federal level, once they are delivered, they should be given to the, the, the beneficiaries as soon as possible so that uh, nobody gets too hungry to become angry. Mm. What happened was uh, hungry people that became angry and went their way. That again is part of uh, what we need to correct. Of course, and that united them in that spirit of hunger exactly. and anger. <laughs> it was even more unifying than the football we exactly. usually say exactly. unifies uh, uh, Nigerians no matter what divide. Yeah, yeah. Maybe maybe to add to it again is uh, is the fact that schools were all closed. Mm. I encourage the governments to as a matter of urgency. The uh, COVID nineteen uh, pandemic is uh, the, the, the curve is already flattening. Mm. I would strongly advise that schools should reopen as soon as possible so that our wives and children go back to school. Um, it's part of uh, what uh, created the last uh, issues we have. Mm. Schools have to open so that everybody gets engaged. And uh, once that happens, I'm not sure we'll have issues uh, again. Well, um, that will be left for the policy makers to decide but of course, we want to enjoy peaceful coexistence and won't stop talking about those issues that would ensure that we have peace in our society. And um, we thank you again very much, sir, for giving us your time and advising us on how we can enjoy this peace in Taraba State and Nigeria at large. Maybe your final word as we wind down on the program. Yeah, my final word to Tarabans is that... Uh, um, the instance protest came and is gone. Um, the 
government as a matter of urgency should put in place measures to ensure this thing does not happen again. The local government should also have programs that will encourage the youth so that this thing does not happen again. And uh, the youth also should try to restructure their lifestyle uh, and become pro productive citizens of this country uh, because they are the leaders of tomorrow. So my candid advice is everybody for everybody to play his or her part so that we can have a very good and better Taraba. Thank you. Thank you so much sir, again for granting us this time. And that's the much we'll take on the program today. But uh, join us again same time next week for another enlightening package. And recall you can also watch this and listen to it entirely on our online platform on www.zitonline.com. I am yours sincerely, Iwe Sekundi Enoch, asking you to skip the dialogue here. Bye for now. Hello, I am Queen Kunde Eno. Join us every Tuesday on the program Talking Peace, where we raise discourse on how to attain peaceful coexistence and tolerance in our society. Talking Peace is a production of ZT Communications in partnership with Taraba State Broadcasting Service, TSBS, Jalungo. For inquiries and advert placements, please call 0803-454-0469. Talking Peace is the, the meeting point. point. Join, Join us. us.